Council on Aging on Thursday, the 12th of January, first meeting of 2023. It is 5.35. Uh, we'll do, as we normally do, a quick round table introduction, mm -hmm. and then we'll uh, jump in. I'm, I'm J.D. Miller, Chairman. I'll go to my wife. Uh, Linda Hayes, Director of the Senior Center. Leslie James, Board Member. Marie Fricker, Board Member. Dee Dwyer, Board Member. I'm H. Barry, uh, liaison for FOSS. I'm um, Paul, liaison for FOSS, but I'll be sure to Susan Polk, board member. Tim Adams, social aid program coordinator. Back out from board member. Susan Dravich Kelly, vice chair. And Jen, welcome. Thank you. Uh, nice to be here. Uh, I think everyone's got attached minutes. Hopefully, some or all had a chance to maybe look at them online, but I want to take a quick minute to take a look at last month's meet minutes. Right ahead. Susan is. Oh, okay, cool. Yep. Well, she's informally known as the town social worker, but uh, she's in charge of social services. It's her title of the good team. It is true. That's what she did. Mm -hmm. And she might have said that. Thank you. <clears throat> Does anyone have any edits, comments to last month's minutes? Filed by Pat. Thank you very much in advance. Good job. Uh, and I have a motion to approve the December 2022 board minutes. Motion to approve the minutes. Thank you, Leslie. Second. Thank you, Susan. Um, very good. So um, we do have our guest, John Adams, here. Um, who is Who's taking those? Susan. Oh, okay. So Jen has already told me that once you hand the microphone over to her, she'll talk on this week. So we're going to hand it over to her now. Well, we're going to hand it over to her now so we can get out of here by nine. Well, yeah. But she is started. She has started with us as the new yeah. social day program Welcome. coordinator. Welcome. Thank um, you. Yeah, wanted, yeah. I mean, we've we've been hearing about things. So tell. Yeah, I'm not exactly what you've heard, but we will be, oh, um, <laughs> so I get to repeat everything you've heard already. We will be starting, I believe, on January 23rd. We do have some sign-ups coming this week, and we will start um, with the number that we have, even if we don't count at eight. Um, but I do think that will come very soon once we get going, word of mouth. Um, we did start putting some flyers up. So, and we'll yeah, yeah. And you've all Actually. gotten a card as well, and I've put these in mm -hmm. certain locations. Uh, but that kind of gives you an idea of what we'll be doing each day. It'll be a five hour day, 9 30 to 2 30, <coughs> with lunch downstairs. Um, each day we'll have some physical exercise, cognitive stimulation, we'll do creative activities, uh, social activities. We can do um, uh, outings and have entertainers come in, so it's really it's it's pretty limitless. Um, 
all the activities will be newly colored purposeful activities. That's really what we're focusing on. And just um, being able to give a safe social space with respite to caregivers as well. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping once it gets rolling, not only will we have the eight, maybe we'll have more and we can add those other days. Mm -hmm. yep. This yeah. is her room. This is the room. But that doesn't mean they wouldn't travel if they wanted to use the exercise room. They could use that. Then. Yeah. One question I yeah. had it, on the promos here. Um, mm -hmm. I'm all about marketing. So, um, you know, you have a fabulous background, which, you know, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to mm -hmm. suggest that it might add more credibility to the promo mm -hmm. to put down your name and whatever your title is mm -hmm. and right. maybe even because that would be my first question if I you know if my mom was still alive yeah, yeah. you know I, who's running this yeah. you know, what's their background and all of that so I think it would be really good to improve that Okay. I think that's a good yeah. suggestion. I didn't think of it really, and I was trying um, to be concise on that. Yeah. But um, and that's why I only got 150 to start in case I there were these. some suggestions. So yeah. we just do that. But I I'll pass this around. Um, my certifications are here, but also on the other side of my trainings, just um, to give you an idea of, of yeah. where I'm at. Um, no, I know that. That's why I'm saying I think it should be. And if you do have degrees, I mean, I know with other this things, I mean, we could put that right under, you know, like, <coughs> yeah, right underneath your title. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great, great. Yeah. Are there any other questions about what we'll be doing in the course of the day or what our goals are? Do we have membership yet? I'm expecting three sign-ups this week. Yeah. Um, with a family tomorrow, tomorrow morning. So we're finally getting it out. After the holidays, it was a little bit of a, mm. a little bit of a, a drive there, but now we're just we're really trying to get it out. Uh, contacted the library, and they're going to help with that too. So we fully expected a little bit of a deluge, but then I don't know. Things change rapidly sometimes in the area. People weren't necessarily here anymore. Maybe we had gone to Florida, so. so kind of a funny balance. You want to have eight people, but you don't want to turn away 20. Yeah. Well, we will, there will certainly be a wait list, and because things do change, how long would it remain, you know, the status quo? You know, at one point someone is progressing and it's appropriate, and then we fill it. We have had the question, which I could bring up, about whether or not people from out of situate could apply to the program. And so, the thought um, has been that we would give priority to situate first, but if there were openings, that we could entertain that. But yet that does seem a little gray, um, just because we might have a wait list, and in which case will it, will we ever be able to open it up? Or right now, if, if we were going to start and we didn't have a full eight, I guess we could, but you hate to have them waiting in the wings. So I don't know how people feel about that, but we did think there would be so much interest just within the community that it would be hard to also open it up. But, um, and I think it will once you get started and word of mouth. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I mean, it's really hard to start a brand new program and yeah. get the word out. I think a lot of people, I mean, there's definitely a need for it in the community. And it's probably just a matter of the fact that a lot of people don't know about it. We were just talking about the numbers, and we know what the numbers of 65 and older are. And in situate, we're actually higher than the Massachusetts average of self-reported. Alzheimer's and di um, dementia diagnoses. So we are running ahead. We're actually ahead, so we're uh, like 42 percent of our 65 plus population. Mm -hmm. Massachusetts is about 10.7. Does that so include the, um, but that's self-reported. So again, those numbers are being Does that include nursing homes? Um, I'm not sure who self-reported specifically. Mm -hmm. um, so it's uh, Tufts puts it out every year. And, and these numbers are actually from 2018. They don't have um, current. the current number, so you get to add on to that as well. Right. And so. speaking of, the, I mean, in our meeting last week, we talked about like now that you have the marketing materials, is to get this information like to the obvious to building places and you know nursing homes and 
just here, even in our community, to let people know. <coughs> Oh, <laughs> I did. Good. There wasn't a line yeah, for you, right? So you put a little sticker just yeah. so they can pull the number up. Well, I was going to do the notes for this meeting. Do you want to say anything about Akron to mention it? Just put it in the notes. Um, no, I'm not so putting it in the notes. Yeah, no, not at all. Um, my background is in soci sociology and social work and education. Um, for the past four years, I've had multiple trainings through um, ALZ.org. I have the Alzheimer's Essentials training certification and um, brain longevity training, as well as probably about 15 or 20 um, specific trainings for Alzheimer's, dementia, um, communications, behaviors, and things. <laughs> Multiple certifications. Right. You, I'm, a, I'm a little bit of an education junkie. That's <laughs> are there specific certifications that you have to have in order to do this? No. Um, and That's really, the, the, the best thing is experience. Yeah. Um, being at Sunrise yeah. was my biggest education. Right. And the only reason why I asked is because if there was, then we could put that on the promo. Yeah, there, there isn't. Um, I would recommend <coughs> doing training through ALZ.org if you want to volunteer. Uh, they're very easy um, and very informative. They have a lot of material. Um, dementia Friends of Massachusetts, I just went through their program um, in order to look forward to making such a dementia friendly. Yeah, no, I have a great resume. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so that's something to look at in the future. But yeah. um, really just just working with, with people who have all stages of Alzheimer's and dementia disease has been, uh, it, it's amazing. And it's, that's really where I feel like I've gotten the most in the education. Well, we're lucky that we have it. Absolutely. In our community, just to question what it costs. Thank you. How do you expect people to arrive and depart? So they're getting rides here. Yep. They'll come in. Um, and do you mean specifically when they come into the room? Yeah, what we I, will I, do? They, well, no, no, no. Or are they, do they know to come up to stairs? Oh yeah, yeah. So do they know to leave and find who's picking them up? Yeah, we will um, work with the families okay. to make that very clear. So they they can be assisted. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They can they can be brought upstairs. Um, you know. Downstairs, I'll have a volunteer when we're looking at a four one ratio. I've had a couple of volunteers already um, come to me and they have great um, backgrounds. They uh, both have worked with mm -hmm. this population. That's great. Yeah. yeah. We'll need more, presumably, yeah. just as backup, of yep. course. And yep. maybe if the need shows itself to have more in the room or, you know, just for lunch. <coughs> And we will go through the training that Jen talks about through alts.org. If anybody can volunteer for that matter, any of the staff, any of you are interested? And will you be sort of taking attendance? Like, what if somebody misses a couple of weeks in a row? We'll be taking attendance. They know to call if they're not going to be able to come yeah. on those days. Um, <coughs> so. Actually, we probably should mention. So there's some um, paperwork. Yeah. So there's an application, so to speak. So we've got purple folders downstairs ready for you know any of the applicants, so to speak. So an application, a request for a medical form to be completed by the doctor, or at least some sort of confirmation of the diagnosis um, waiver, so to speak, or um, just knowledge of leaving, coming and going. Okay. Do you have like a next of yeah. kin that you make sure the Oh, we do anyway, so yes, absolutely. Yeah. But um, I guess that's what we wrote in. If two weeks are missed, then it's just reassessing whether they want to continue to come. I mean, anyone could be sick. But part of the criteria for joining the program is sort of um, an agreement that they want to be here, and it's not a, a, a hassle in the morning trying to get them here. Okay. 
And every So, um, yeah, great. Yeah, so, so the process to too is to receive one of those, meet with Jen, and maybe having had a conversation either with me or Jen initially, but then I'll just call it the other procedures. Good. Uh, the other one, I guess, that had come up was um, well, we are asking for payment ahead for the month to come, but of mm -hmm. course, should they not complete the whole month, then certainly there could be interest. Mm -hmm. um, If an opening occurs, then someone would be invited from the wait list if there is one, or there would just be an opening until someone else applies. But also, if we had a second day, which I don't expect to do for at least three months, but um, then we would go to the wait list first and invite eight or however many we would have. And then, if the first group was interested in a second day, mm -hmm. then they could um, yeah. Yeah. opt in. But first, we'd go to a new. new so and those are just a few of the things that came up. That right in. The daily curriculum is awesome. I know, that's all. I want to be there. <laughs> I don't really want to be there. But it does. It sounds like fun. That's the whole yeah. thing. It sounds yeah. like fun. Can I it's ask a question about the oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. mystery purse purple folder? Yes. So is that like a welcome folder for the people? This is the packet with the paperwork. Oh, yeah, the, the paperwork that they'll fill out and our policies. Okay, so one thing I would do, like from a marketing mm -hmm. viewpoint, and it's not really expensive, we did it for the 50 plus program, is to get labels. Mm -hmm. You know, you can buy those yeah. folders like really easy from Staples, and they usually have sales. But then what we did is we just got a label. Um, you know, maybe they, you could come up with some kind of, you know, promo label for the daycare program, and you just put them on there with maybe, you know, contact information or something like that, just to yeah. make it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's really to look at it. That's to give yeah. people yeah. who are inquiring about the program right. or that seem at least serious yeah. about considering it, as opposed to when they walk into the room, they're not getting that and keeping it. Do you know right, but I, mean? I think it's it would still be good just rather than handing them a, a purple folder is mm -hmm. to have a label. But we just didn't get that yeah. yeah. And you can get them, I mean, just to print those, you can get a whole bunch of them. Oh, no. We, Right. That is yeah. true. It should, it, it should be a lot of fun, you know, high, highlights that we'll do, armchair yeah. travel, I love yeah. that. <laughs> um, meet me at MoMA, that's another great one. Um, it's an art program, sort of like a docent art program where you learn about a specific artist and then we'll do an activity that is with that artist's techniques. Mm. So, I like um, armchair um, travel. Armchair travel is great. I think great. I'll start doing that. Yeah. It <laughs> doesn't cost as much as really. It, it does not. It's the whole, uh, whole experience. Yeah. It sounds yeah. awesome. You know, Jennifer, we always give more averages on uh, a program monthly on a travel. And uh, maybe she'd come over and speak because she's you new. Know, she took over when I retired. Mm -hmm. And she loves the idea of uh, expanding and they might enjoy it. <coughs> yeah. You yeah. know, just a thought. Can we pass the purple folder on to say sure, absolutely. Uh, we gentlemen are looking forward to getting started, as I'm sure you are. Does anybody have any questions for her? Are there many programs like this in other senior centers that probably should know that, but I don't. Um, so Marshfield has one. They are in their second year, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and they also similarly started, you know, a little bit slower. And then they got their full numbers, and now they've moved to two days. But it's fairly unique then, and it's part of the you know, social work? Well, it is fairly unique, but Duxbury has had it for it. Yeah, it's yeah, common. 12 years. Yeah. Oh, wow. Maybe it's three. I don't think I'll have it. How many days have they had? Um, the other way that some have done it is sort of through what was called memory cafes, and that was a way to provide some activity which was really intended for the caregiver and the mm -hmm. client that might um, have. But um, we just never got that up off the ground during the 
in the other senior center or while we were moving it was just you know it needs to be perfect but this is a better offering for now because mm -hmm. it is respite as well yeah. Yeah. but we could still integrate some of the other opportunities with caregivers especially once they're comfortable here that probably would be nice so we'll probably hopefully get to that the respite part is huge. Oh, yeah. yeah. I have a cousin that's just been going through all this stuff. And to get someone in for two hours and just paying people just so she can. Very good. Dentist? Yeah. yeah. So oh, yeah. It's, yeah. it's huge. Yeah. Yeah. It's huge. This is great. I mean, $30, you have the full day yeah. with lunch. We do a little, you know, coffee, tea, and maybe a muffin in the morning, just a little coffee chat to get started. Um, most in home care. You need the three hours, and it can run $25, $30 an hour. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we so we do have those three hours in them, so. And this is forty dollars a week. Forty dollars for savers. Which is definitely it's either the same as Marshfield or less than Duxbury is sixty. Um, so it seems like it would be fine. But if people couldn't afford it and we have the room and they have the need, there are ways that we could maybe help. Is it subsidized in some way through one of these programs or we can Not yet. I mean, I shouldn't say that. We have had a donation, right, a large donation right. that we could call on while we're building the program. But once we have a full quorum and everyone is paying for their weekly meeting, um, it should be self-sustaining. And mm -hmm. that's how we wrote it. And that's what the select board wanted to see, right. um, even though we do have a donation that could help to support it. We have an asset that yeah. it was tough to rely on that and then that would end, so we wanted it to be right. so so okay. Okay. Good to have good. Jen and um, quickly, you know, the, uh, I mean, we luckily have one desk downstairs in our office <coughs> that she can use. We also have allowed volunteers to be there on occasion. That is our extra desk. Um, so we have it luckily. But you know, quickly we're we're out of desks. <laughs> we're sort of out of office space, so that's something we're gonna have to look at again soon. Um, isn't there is there an office up here or a space up here that you can use as an office? Potentially. Mm -hmm. not. I can tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Do you need any restrictions on the demeanor? It was just so calming and comfort. Oh, thank really you. Same here. Very, very pleasant. Thank and you. then we work with early childhood children too, right? Yeah. yeah. So maybe you develop that pathway to get that mother's raising her own three children. <laughs> Coming and part of it. Yeah. Yoga helps too. And the yoga. Yeah. Yeah. So the yoga. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is just an outline of a day. I'll pass this around, but we pass so much around. You don't have to feel compelled to look at it. But the pictures, it's a little bit of a menu of um, what we would be doing during each component of the day. Super. I'm looking forward to getting, getting going. <laughs> So the, the, all these, like the mini golf bowling that's all in this room? We can use the room down the hall. Um, it's available from 11 to 12, and also there's another uh, time in the afternoon. But honestly, the furniture moves. We can sort of make the room what we want to make it. We can kind of pick and choose. Um, I do a, a curriculum for that particular day. I'll refer back to that on and off. And um, sort of based it on um, also what's going on with Chinese New Year's. Mm -hmm. um, we'll, we would be doing January 23rd, so things would be geared toward that. Our armchair travel would be China, of course. So well, afternoon snack would be tea and fortune cookies. So things would um, you know fall in, yeah. in line a little bit with um, special holidays and that type of thing, seasonal. Good. <coughs> Very good. Uh, does anyone have any other questions for Jen? Or we're, uh, we welcome you and we look forward to getting started as I'm sure you do. Um, so thank you for being here and giving us an overview. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, do you need this back? Stick around, or you're welcome to excuse yourself depending on your excitement level. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I will now turn this over to our director for the report. Okay. That was a great time. Hi. Good to be back. I know I missed, well, I missed last meeting. Um, but uh, I appreciate everybody who was here and helped Erica feel welcome and listen to, to her talk about what her role is for us and for the town as well. Um, so in addition to the social day program, which we are excited about, it looks like we will be able to embark on that on the 23rd, which would be great. Um, we also, because we are getting busier here and just in knowing what rooms are being used, I mean, we've had a regular schedule and maybe it's in my head and certainly it's in Jess's or we each have our own calendars and we pass information back and forth, but my senior center just wasn't enough to be able to tell what rooms were open when we need to schedule. So Jess did some research and came up with one that we've now subscribed to, so it's something that can be shared among us. So uh, we're just starting. It's just a better visual for us that we can see a grid of all the rooms on a given day or month and all the activities that are in them. Good. So we don't double book yeah. or um, because that, that can be a problem. So um, excited about that and it's working so far. We are paying $50 a month for that, which isn't crazy anyway. So it's called Skeeda. Anyone's heard of it? It looks like Skeeda. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. yeah. Good. And is it, I like it. I'm assuming it's live. So in other words, if you made a notation, it would immediately pop it down. Yes. In, in that chair, yeah. Good. So that's good, I like it. Um, just one other program to try to keep a handle on, but um, in terms of the building, I mean, lots, of course, lots have been going on. Even, I mean, who you would think January might have slowed down a little or somehow the week before Christmas or between Christmas and New Year's would be slow. But it really hasn't been. It's been a nice January. Uh, we came close to needing um, to open the building on Christmas Eve day had been the little anticipated by the fire chief because of the storm and thinking that people, a lot of people would lose power over an extended period. But that op that just brought up um, an issue for me, for us. It's one thing to open the building, but to be told necessarily that, well, Christmas Eve, you need to have some volunteers, you know, it was good. or staff, or staff. Yeah. So between the fire chief and their emergency response team, now CERT, would be used, the volunteers who um, work as certain members um, would be called upon to open the shelter if that happens, and that would be an overnight shelter, right? So that's where their role is, but really, uh, I think they should be part of this as well if we're being asked to, it's one thing Monday through mm -hmm. Friday, it's another thing on weekends. Mm -hmm. Overnight shelter is the high school. Is the high school right. still. So it's not us. Now, they'd rather do it through us and not have to open an overnight shelter, which is great on a weekday, like I said. But So I have a few people that certainly I am asking that are part of the tax work our program, which is something that maybe would make them a little more regular and reliable, and I'll teach them the ins and outs of the building or making coffee, which is mostly all we have to do. Um, there was only one big one, I think, last year, and it was a weekday or a couple of weekdays, two or three in a row. And, I mean, the biggest thing besides coffee was the electrical outlets for oh, charging. Yeah. Charging, yeah. 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 charging. And, Kevin, you know, finding the oldest things going, so really probably just have a few more of those ready and waiting. But, you know, that made it fun. It was fun, and we weren't really relied upon for food, but we did our best, and we can't be relied upon for food on a weekend and know what's in the refrigerator or prep for that. So that's something else that had come up. Um, we're really not a shelter. We are come in, we can certainly make coffee. That's easy enough. Um, maybe we'll have an easy winter. We only had the one time last year that it was a problem. But um, so something I'm working on. If anybody else wants to be on that volunteer list, but I have uh, at least two or three. And they should provide the CERT people as well that would volunteer for that. It is good. We have physically other people in the building and that who will, will it be being? Well, on a week day, that doesn't matter. I mean, the building's open and we would be a little bit more liberal in terms of if a room is not being used, they're certainly welcome to go in there. We had people in the hallway during the three-day period that people had lost power because it was busy. We were still running a couple of things. We had a couple of exercise classes. I think by the third day we actually did have lunch but everybody was mostly in the cafe, 
on the first floor might have started to wander and gone upstairs and looked for quieter spots, but they weren't restricted. If it's a weekend, I don't know. If they could be restricted to the first floor, first it depends. Floor. It depends if we yeah. have more more personnel here, I guess it wouldn't matter. If it was very crowded, I guess it wouldn't matter. That's never happened on a weekend. We've opened, we've had a handful of people, but, but it hasn't been a big weekend issue since we've opened this building. Does it ever come up the library being up on the big one? Well, it does come up in that if they were uh, sending a message out and they knew um, people might have a need, then the library, when they would normally have hours, right, would be open. It's just that, let's say they're not open on Sunday. Then no, they but we're open Sunday. Okay. Seven days a week. Uh, we AC. I did think it was know. seasonal. That is true. They just don't have coffee. They are welcome to go to the library. That is true. When it's open and available. So that hasn't always been 24-7 always been that. It is just daytime for us. Would well, they like me to be open like as a cooling center, 7 or 8 yeah. p.m.? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. pardon me? They have to staff it then. Yeah. That would be nice. So that was, you know, they are long days. Yeah. But, yes, the library gets mentioned. It's just whether or not they are in fact open or not. It's just, they are one, they're open nine to nine. They are, one of, they are one of the options for sure. And it's seven days a week. So there's that. Um, otherwise, in the building as well, so in December, Jess, for the second time, had arranged to have Storybook Cove come in, which was a really nice thing for people, I think. A lot of setup, and people probably know this bookstore, which is now in Hanover, um, used to be at Merchants Row as well, but anyway. They did a nice job, and it was a nice offering, um, and they give us a little donation off the top of their sales, so that is very nice as well. Um, the Knitters did a week-long sale of a huge inventory that I had no idea of. Oh, it's a week long. I didn't and we would change that. that. Mm -hmm. We would change that for the next time if they needed it. Now, they went through a lot of stuff, no doubt, and people were very appreciative of, of it. But on the first floor, it was a little um, overwhelming. And um, in the future, if we didn't have a targeted arts and crafts fair that they could do that, we would probably keep them in the big room and make sure we arrange for it to happen over. So in terms of the sale of all of their knitted goods, did they give any, I mean, Yes, the they, they actually divided it among some other nonprofits or community. But it was basically a fundraiser. They did it as a fundraiser, yeah, yes. Nice. And, it, and it, you know, it was our knitters who've been knitting you know, for years, really. I mean, that's been a group that's been with the Senior Center since I started and, and well before it. There was a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff. Lots of hats. Yeah. Scarves. And you can recognize them now when people come in the building with their scarves <laughs> and their hats. I don't know where they got it. And they're all happy about it. So anyway, it, it was great for them. It did cause you know a little bit of issue with too much going on on the first floor. Um, so I think we would just find a better way to do it for them in the future. But an arts and crafts here is something that we are open to doing next year. To work on this year. I guess it is next. Um, other evening meetings have continued, the Sister City Committees. Now we are doing the film showings that it used to be just the French Sister City did once a month, but now the Irish Sister City Committee is showing a film. Um, gosh, that might be next week. And they have a new um, Cape Verdean Sister City as well that is on the docket. So there were three Tuesdays this month and three Tuesdays next month scheduled with us for a Tuesday evening for a film showing for each of those respective sister cities, which yeah, is what, fine. What time is it? Um, they say it's at 6, the film, they show, start the film at 6.30. Okay. Till 8? It depends on the film. Oh. Yeah. But you know they need to be out by 9. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have a staff person? Well, I, I'm a staff person, and I've only been home? twice, but... Um, you stayed at 8 or 9? Yeah. Well, last night, actually, I... This week, I didn't. I actually left before the end, and they were allowed to just clear up. But to start the movie, nobody's trained to do that. I could ask them that. But I don't mind. You could put in your own movie request, then, maybe. I know, I could. <laughs> I know, I had to make the announcement at church, and I've never taken French. <laughs> <laughs> the movie was. So it's like me and Father. Oh, well, Father Anthony, we're trying to figure <laughs> out how do they say this. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, we both said that. I gave it my best <laughs> shot. <laughs> but anyway, well, well, I'm happy, you know, I'm happy they are able to do that here. It's easy. They're an easy crowd. Although it did um, reveal one problem with the Egypt room and the screen. It's a big enough screen, but as the chairs come back, I think we allowed the first row to be too close, and people behind them could not see the subtitles. So we don't generally show movies or presentations with subtitles at the bottom. And everybody was kind of like moving the chair to the sides or standing up with the lips to see. So it actually, it yeah. actually is a, I don't know, a flaw or something. So we just have to be mindful or test it before we set up. Can't win. I know it's true. It was not funny. <laughs> We, we, we go a higher. popcorn the next time. Yeah. <laughs> and the screen's up the size it can go. And for instance, the art for your mind, that doesn't happen. Even her own screen is smaller that she uses, but her picture, she knows enough, they're just high up. Yeah. Yeah. On and the she screen. moves them. It's, she has quite a um, yeah. program. It's interesting. Yeah. She adjusts. She can. Yeah. It's great. So, okay, and then I mentioned the volunteers already. So, other building items. Can I ask what yeah. Sister Civic Committees. Mm -hmm. That's only sort of a three time period, right? I mean, mm -hmm. They're not doing this. No. Yeah. They they pick out three or four movies. It, it should from only each go through sister mine. city, and they. Yeah. Yeah. It's not new for the French, but it's right. new for the other. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, other building items. I have asked for dimmers, which the electrician I thought had looked at, but he's got to come back because we don't have pricing on it. But it's just again. <clears throat> become clear, first of all, the fitness room, now that it's dark and we're trying to use it later in the day, almost even at night if we could, you either have the lights on like this, or you have the lights off and it's pitch dark. So if anyone takes yoga, you know, you like a little light, but yeah, not well, pitch dark, you can't see. So either we need other lighting in the room, like a floor lamp that we pull out, which eh, we shouldn't have to do, or they should have dimmers. So I'm looking there, and then also in the Egypt room, we had an event, now the, the <coughs> comedian, nobody seemed to mind, and I think the lights were a little too bright, and I could have adjusted, but once we'd started, it was awkward. So we didn't really change those, but when we had the entertainment, the Brown Brothers, it was a Saturday night, and people really wanted it a little bit more club-like, a little bit lower light, and we just didn't have it, you know? I thought we did, but once you see it, it's it actually bright. was still too bright, so I'm just <laughs> yeah, get that. So even though there's three sets of lights, I'd rather have dimmers for whatever, either the pendants or the other ones that are um, yeah. recessed. So anyway, we need a price, which hopefully we'll have Tuesday, and we can go to PVC on Tuesday night yeah. for approval for that money to be spent. Um, right here, I wouldn't think it would be terribly expensive, but I don't know. Oh, you look kind of close to me. Yeah, but. I just they only have to do one price. Yeah, right. I'm more worried about hopefully that they can do it versus what it costs yeah. because we have the money still from the project, so um, I'm not worried about it. I think you can create any small room that you want. We'll see. There is a type. There is a type. Yeah, there is a type. Yeah. So that's up to them. But the other thing I've talked about before is the signage. So I did go to them, but a little bit last minute because Kevin ended up being sick and I thought he had given them the documentation. But So we have two signs that we are thinking of using, one at the driveway and then I thought I wanted to put the other at least somewhere and we chose a spot in the parking lot. But when I showed PBC what we had in mind, they just felt like the parking lot wasn't either safe because there was some obstruction um, that might be caused by having a sign in the middle of that little mm -hmm. lot island in the middle. I don't really agree and maybe we can still come up with a, a visual that shows them that it wouldn't be a problem but otherwise we need to look for an alternative. So the committee would prefer to have the wayfinding sign, the town of Situate wayfinding sign which is the blue and white mm -hmm. that you see at different along the street at intersections as well as at the beginning of the library has that as well. They have a long one in the front and the schools have it and otherwise you see it at different locations. Um, which is fine with me and we put it at the driveway, take out a tree. It would be visible from both sides pretty much. But I'd still like our logo and a carved sign with our senior center logo on it so we are looking for another place to put that. Whether we maybe hang it from um, 
there is a sign against the building, but it's only black and white. Yep. It's a little bit um, of a stencil. Yeah. People just don't see it readily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even if they've come in, it would be nice if they knew this is the front. That's um, the entrance, right? There are a couple of buildings, so they still mm -hmm. get confused as to which is the one that they're looking for once they come in the driveway. So um, maybe on the building is right, so maybe we could hang it um, where, the, where the overhang is, but somewhere along that. So we're working on that, and I expect we can pay for that as well. And I was hoping maybe even by this meeting we'd get it settled. So, but they did suggest that we would probably have to get other approval potentially, at least from the select board, if not from another committee like the planning board. When you come into Park Street with all those signs, it looks like Stellweg and has their logo on it. Stellweg and. Um, no, not it is not. Maybe it looks like it. It is an original. <coughs> Design that the town had employed a designer for some years ago. Not too many, on here five years ago. One the person. I think that logo that you're talking about is on all of them. It's on all of them. But Stellweg is, is, is a private nonprofit. I mean, that's different. So maybe it looks like it. I don't. I don't know. I'd have to check. I don't think it means to. Church and, yeah. um, interesting to note is that we had a lovely art exhibit, which um, I'm sure you noted for November and December, which was Michael Sorrentino retrospective because he's passed, and Lucille, of course, is his wife. So lovely paintings, um, some prints were, were sold for sure as Christmas gifts, which was really nice. But um, she did donate a framed print for us of the quarter deck, which mm. was everybody's kind of favorite. Mm -hmm. It's the most well-known. Mm -hmm. So that is along the wall, walking That's into the dining room side nice. of the banquet room, and it looks great. Mm -hmm. It was very nice of her. <coughs> to do that. We did get a nice private donation for the kitchen, so Fred has a little money if he needs anything that we can use for that, which is nice. And then um, Foss has been supporting our entertainment for the last few months, thanks to you know, Gene Young and um, Jim Young's Memorial Fund. Um, so we didn't have anything for this month because I feel like we just did it for New Year's Eve Eve. And that was free, and I really nice shout out to the WSU band, and not to say it's a secret, but the acronym means whoever shows up. Right. And they did show up for us, which was very nice. So they had 14 musicians. Wow. 14 musicians? 14. Wow. And they probably have 20, maybe they even said 25 total, but 14 is good. Yeah. And they were fabulous. It was really a fun time. And they would do it again. Um, so we'd love to have them back again. Oh, for another, especially once we could maybe go outside. But but they like the room. They like we had not 90 as expected, but about 65 people come to that event, and it was nice. Um, but next month for Valentine's Day, we have Steve Lanzalotta coming with a singer, um, dubbed BB Queen, but also a couple of other musicians with him. And then in March it's St. Patrick's Day, so I do a Matt Brown coming for lunch. And then Matt York coming back, who was very popular. He did the Highwaymen. And we had 65 people just come in for that on a Tuesday afternoon. So he's coming back to do a history of con classic country music, which we thought would be nice. Anyway, Jess and I are plan trying to plan ahead for looking at holidays or seasonal reasons because we'd like Fred's band to come back, um, the WSU as well. And you know, we have, have some needs that we can anticipate. So. Um, Loss of Lillian, which I think everybody probably knows, so the transportation coordinator position is open yet again. What happened? I didn't know that. She was fabulous. Um, she was fabulous, and I guess so fabulous that she could go somewhere else. Oh. So, um, so she did another very good job, and maybe in keeping a little bit more with what her background had been in terms of providing you know, caregiving um, services through NVNA notes, which she's working. It was a good. It was a good opportunity she did for her. She did. She did. As many of them have. I mean, Cla Kathy Clarkson. I would say the same. And Lillian did start, as you know. I believe you know that a companion volunteer that's in place now, and just efficiency in general. And the drivers, of course, love working with her. So we are interviewing. We just started interviewing. So we do have some applicants. I know it's another. Place. What is the oh, well. baseline qualification for something? Like Baseline. Yeah. Well, I mean, they've got any transportation experience, it's probably helpful, but 
It certainly is helpful. Scheduling, administrative, yeah. customer service. Customer service. You know, a degree is nice. I don't know that that's absolutely necessary, but we did go kind of back and forth on that. And I do think they're supervising the drivers. Um, there's a lot that goes into communication with the clients and or sometimes the caregiver or the loved ones. Um, so it's complex. It is a little yeah. bit. It is a little bit. And it's busy. Yeah. And it's full time. A lot of people on the yeah, a lot of juggling, a lot of people on the phone. I think the salary is commensurate really with what's out there. But the job itself, you know, sometimes it's a wearing job. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a little tricky. But um, hopefully we can be support if somebody needs it. But, um, and it's on the town website if anybody wants to look at it. So the other big news that just came to me yesterday, I thought I would let you in on, and it's not decided by, well, you know what they want. So we got a number of calls from frantic um, riders of the sloop, which is not our service, as you know, but the Gatra public um, scheduled van bus that it was ending, going away, that the service was ending. Now, I kind of knew immediately when I, as soon as I thought about it. I did know that Gatua was planning to change the company that provides the drivers, because that's an outsource. So the drivers for the Gatua vans comes from right now, it was Bill's Taxi, and it's been Bill's Taxi since they started. But I knew they were changing. So I did think maybe it was a driver telling them, oh, no, we're done the end of January. Right which is probably, though I don't know, that's not a quote, um, that's what I could imagine. And I do think that is the case, but coincidentally, the director called me at the same time as I was um, emailing the customer service person at Gatford to find out what was the scoop. And she said, oh, well that's odd, <laughs> because she was calling me about something else, and that is that they are recommending that we go to that microtransit system that Joanna Ferreira had come and In spoken about. Yeah. So that's what they want to do with us, but I will say she was talking to me about that, and I really had to say, that's a town attribute. Um, and that was started, originated by the town administrator some years ago, even before Jim, it was Trisha and Casey. So I didn't feel that I had any say in how that works. Um, so I had her call, Jim was out this week, but that is something that yeah. they are you know, recommending, proposing that they want to do because they do think the numbers are a little low and it's been working in the other communities where they have it. But if you remember or didn't hear, yeah. it's an on-call. It's a either call-based where they would have dispatchers at a call center, which hopefully is not us, but um, <laughs> a call center, or an app on a phone or whatever that can be used to basically ask for a ride anywhere within the community so it's not restricted to the set locations where technically they have to pick up a ride or get dropped off. Now that's not really true because you know they can wave and they can get picked up along the route and there are different opportunities for them to go off route but generally speaking it's a, it's a by call um, system yeah. which just Saves, well, saves dead time, I guess. Yeah. They've got the numbers, so if they're making that determination, that they're looking at the So I put the little definition in my report, but on-demand microtransit service, which allows riders to request a vehicle to pick them up for same-day service within a set service area. The other communities where it's happening, um, oh, I guess I didn't put one of them, but Foxborough, Franklin, Norfolk, and Rentham. That's kind of a regional one that yeah. we do it in. Also, <coughs> South Plymouth has it. And I think actually I read now Pembroke and part of Hanover have it, which I didn't know. So uh, they certainly may be going to that. It's, it's not a bad. But I did say to her uh, while I had her on the phone, you know, it does have to be age friendly. And even though we would say it's not all our people, it is a majority, our demographic that is she said there would be plenty of education, which of course we do here, or the library, or as many places as it was needed to help people understand how the service would work and what they needed to do to, um, to connect with it. But again, I can't say that this is happening necessarily, but it was just funny that everybody was panicked about losing it. And I said to her, well, there's one way to learn how many people really are using it is to tell them it's going away. Right, because right. all of a sudden there were many phone calls to town hall and us and the social worker and it's just, you know, it, it does get used. It does yeah. get used. 
No, okay. not two Google Maps. Um, so it needs to be two yeah. options. Yeah. And she, yeah. she did say that. Um, I think they need to know how much it would be the other option versus the app. I mean, students certainly use it, and of course they love apps. Yeah, but, right. um, no. yeah. It is an ultra Uber type thing, yeah. but um, it's got to be friendly, and I'm sure that's what Jim will be concerned about when he talks to her. But again, it's, that's a ton of situate. Um, Was Slip free? No. Not for like a dollar fifty or something. Yeah, it was seventy five cents yeah. each way. Or a bit. Do you have to have a Charlie card? Um, you don't have to have a Charlie card. Um, that's for no. a discount, so to speak, or to identify yourself okay. as a, um, okay. a senior discount is like a Charlie. Oh yeah. Okay. So can I put a pause mm -hmm. with you? Because I know some people have to leave. Oh, sure. I'd like to hop to the accreditation okay. discussion and then okay. come back to. The Okay, so I gave you a separate uh, staple, that's fine, a separate staple piece that I'm also going to add something to because I thought this was in it and then I noticed it wasn't. So please um, take one of these as well. So accreditation, what's happened to me, which is just no surprise, is, you know, I think I talked about wanting to do a, um, a, a strategic plan, right? It's time to do a strategic plan, and that was my goal. And then also for the next fiscal year, get accredited. And it normally has taken most places a year to do this. They do say six to 12 months. Generally speaking, it's nice to have that 12 month buffer. What happened was, then it came across my desk to email that NISC, which is a a part of NCOA, the National Council on Aging, and then the National Institute of Senior Centers, who, who oversees the whole accreditation process, provides the accreditation process, <coughs> was changing it to make it a little more accessible. There were people who you do have to pay for it, um, and it is a little hard to do, and you do, you do get peer-reviewed, you get someone to come in and um, view what's happening at the senior center against the standards that they're expecting and, and looking at the binder that you create with all the forms and documents that they need to review. So it's got more cachet, obviously, if you're getting approved as an accredited yeah. senior center than just what they're doing after June 30th. This is just going to be a self-assessment that you can do or not do at your sort of leisure without being um, obligated to fit a certain time frame. So I thought, oh, I really wanted to be accredited, like really accredited, yeah. nationally accredited. So I asked if I could still get in on it, and they said, yeah, but you have to do it in six months. So, so that's it. We're starting to do that. Um, so what I've given you is just a little bit of an overview. It's a little fragmented because there's lots and lots of documents, and I didn't want to do that to you yet. I think there is a, a video she sent me that might be useful, and I will either show it next time or use it when we start to form committees, which we need, because there are nine standards, nine areas. Now, JD went through this as a community member um, for Hingham, so he's got some experience. I did go through it with Duxbury when they first got accredited. I'm going back, you know, in the early 2000s, sometime like 2008. So, um, so I've seen it done. It's, it's not possible. It's just a lot. And what I did just pass around was at least the nine standards that you could see. So purpose and planning, which is where we would start <coughs> anyway, because that's where the mission statement comes in, which we already have. So much of this we will have. The strategic plan, I, I think hopefully we could fill in very easily with um, with sort of what we've been doing and talking about and knowing where we wanted to go. But um, I have annual reports I've done every year, of course, for the town. And that's being used, I guess, to try to create the profile. So there's something that we would do that would be a profile for the senior center. That's one of the documents that they expect. Community connection. So obviously bringing in community partners to be on each of these committees would be helpful. Marketing. Um, governance. Um, that's, I'm sure, bylaws, which we have, of course, as you well know, and we improved those a few years ago, so that shouldn't be an interest, I mean, an issue. 
But it'll be, it's a reassessment. It's, it's it time is a to take reassessment. a look at everything yeah. that we've got <coughs> and say, yes, this is good, or where do we, where do we, where should we be? I mean, our staffing, we've got job descriptions for everybody. We've yeah. got policies that, you know, I have been working on. So that is an area that was just evolving for us in the building now. So that's definitely something that will be a little newer, but also something we wanted to complete. Um, program development and implementation of programs and services. That's a big, big area. So, um, so that would be a, a separate committee, and certainly I'd ask Jeff to, Jess to be involved where she could, and anyone else from here. So each of you, I hope, would maybe be willing and interested in being on one of the committees um, to help with this is a huge organization. Yeah. Yeah. It, is. Yeah. it is. It's huge. It is a lot of paperwork. It's, yeah. it's some discussion. It's, yeah. it's a lot of paperwork. Just one um, thing jumps out. The yeah. facility. Mm -hmm. See, you sent a picture that includes outside signage. <laughs> right, right. So yeah. funny. See, you sent a picture. That, oh, I didn't even read that one. Thanks for picking up <laughs> yeah, on I that. Okay. That. Well, I'll have to tell the PBC yeah. that I need that. Right. Um, I mean, I, Marie, we, we kind of look at this, and, 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 you know, we're gonna, we've got nine categories we want. Ideally, we'd like one board member to be on one of those areas with relevant staff and maybe one to two outside community people. Come together, sit down, and say, you know, this is, this is our, we're analyzing our mission statement. Is this what we really want to say? Is this who we really are? Should we say something differently, or does this nail? This is yeah. And so it's doing that for all these things as a self self assessment. So it, it's, I mean, it might it, but it shouldn't be onerous. But it should we. It, it's going to be some scheduling to get four people together or three people together to do that for an hour, and then have the results and their evaluations, um, and come back and reassess and then submit those to Linda. What, what is it June? June 30th. Well, we're going to try and make it happen. You submit your application, so to speak, with everything completed in documents online. So so six we, months after we, that. We, we, we'll less. Does it have to be in one format? It's not going to be pieces. It should be it's in. supposed to be one. one I mean, the binder four. could be very big. I've seen the, bind, the finished binders. But, you know, I did give you the sheet that said four reasons to pursue it. And I mean, it is a reputation thing. It certainly is our image. And mm -hmm. I think because Duxbury, Marshfield, Hingham, and actually, I, I'm not sure I realized Cohasset was accredited, but, but they are. So, I mean, is the sort of hate to be odd man out there, especially yeah. when we have this great facility yeah, that we're exactly. yeah. um, And it is a plan for the future that I really wanted to have well, for the town. Does the accreditation have to be renewed at certain degree? It's supposed to, it was supposed to be renewed every five years. I think they give you like a five to eight year latitude, but yeah. That might not be the same once they've gone to the self-assessment model mm -hmm. afterwards, I don't know. Or maybe once you're in, your grandfather, then maybe it would. Um, right. Maybe right. It would. You know, on the database for the uh, Council on Aging, you go on and do your programs, each one of those that you mentioned has it on there. That's how I became aware mm -hmm. of it. And then I picked up when you started talking yeah. about it. Yeah. It is. It's something that you say we're a nationally accredited senior center, and we are basing, you know, decisions and plans and um, implementation on the standards that they've developed. And you've done the work to achieve it too. You know. Are there any samples from other? Yeah. Yes. We really would need. <laughs> well, actually, yeah. I certainly have been told I can look at Duxbury. Yeah. You know. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. Right. If right. they've done it, it's fine. So she's perfectly willing to help, yeah. as would any of them, honestly. So mm -hmm. um, we'll keep them in the back pocket. And it is a chance, and we've done this before, I do think, in achieving the senior center and in going through the process of um, making the community more aware, anyway, of what we do and how important it was to get this building. They have, we have connected with them, but it's another chance to connect with some of the other community agencies, nonprofits, you know, mm -hmm. town departments, whatever it is, and that is helpful. Mm -hmm. That's always helpful. Is this something that would ever be distributed to the citizens of Situate? Um, in other words, does it have to be in speak that's that's um, mm -hmm. 
in general, the object is it going to be in more of an essay format? Yeah. Um, I think I'm, I'm not sure if I understand the question yeah. exactly. The question but is like. Is it to be written in informal speech? No, it's kind of field oriented, um, you know. Very specific. There would be an opportunity, like, describe your senior center in a thousand words or less. Mm -hmm. That might be an opportunity, yes, if you're asking if somebody right. could write that, <laughs> give me their um, mm -hmm. their view, and then assimilate all that into an answer. In that other words, if each of these categories, someone um, or a group of people, mm -hmm. We're giving specifics, yeah. and someone has to meld it into a yeah. cohesive right. document. I would be very good at that okay. type of thing, yeah. but I wouldn't yeah. be good at knowing what the specifics right. are. Okay. And I know I can yeah. learn them, but well, I or someone on the staff would also be yeah. with you on each of these committees. You know, mm -hmm. at least to talk about that or to to do the finalist. Right. So, I guess so. Okay. Yes, you wouldn't be on your own, but um, yeah, that would be great. If you have certain skills, you know, talent skills, you know, connections. And I think we still, and I know J.D. and Susan were going to work with me on the strategic plan, so, you know, that's a small committee right there. But um, I think it'll, it'll kind of start to trickle down. You know, we have to start with a point, develop who we might want to invite on the committees, but one of the documents I gave you does list some suggestions for committee members, I believe. Is it there? Is that and, and, and ideally, I mean, if there's something that you would really have an interest in, great. But, I'll, but we might just ask you to, you know, hop on the transportation committee yeah. or the yeah. because we want right. Yeah. And if anybody has multiple suggestions, multiple folks in multiple areas. I mean, I meant to talk to Karen Campfield sort of about it beforehand, and, and as an uh, elected official, I'd probably ask her because she was on the liaison if she's willing, and if not, we'll look at some others. Um, well, would you say, Linda, that most of these things are really already in place? It's just talking about it. And analyzing them. Are they, yeah, are they working? Are, yeah. are, are they where they should be? No, Where's our, it, is it, does it match our five year plan yeah. in terms of a vision? Mm -hmm. I mean, in some ways, I was waiting for the building. Um, in order to start it, because we wouldn't have really been accredited in the old building, it just wouldn't, wouldn't have passed the muster. Um, and I didn't really, well, I had thought I would get uh, the director certification, and that would have helped me make a start on some of these things that maybe weren't done, but I did not go through with that. That was when the building was, was being built, so um, I didn't get to that. So this, some of it is, is probably new. Um, Evaluations. We are. We have done some. So transportation has had a survey evaluation. Um, yes. Jess has made one for activities, which we've also done in the past, mm -hmm. and one for um, fitness classes. So yes, we are meeting some of the standards already in some fashion. So. Um, Will there be an accreditation committee that visits the center? Or? There will be exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that's. That's the biggest difference, but also the timetable, and I think it's a little bit more stringent, mm -hmm. the process. Right. And the expectation, probably, but it's one thing, it? so they'll give us a yeah. <laughs> six months. Totally on my side. <laughs> so by next meeting, you know, I assume we'll have talked and have a lot more concrete understanding of, maybe there'll be some um, communication during the month about each of the committees, and if you would do this or that. And if you have any suggestions for others, or we have, you know, we'll maybe have already come up with them. So when do you want to set a deadline for committee assignments? Because um, otherwise it could drift into... Well, I would say a deadline is either next is February by next meeting date. Yeah, sometimes in the next couple of weeks, sometimes by the end yeah. of the month. So if anyone knows specifically an area that they want to work in, Raise your hand or, sit, uh, yeah, or let somebody know, yeah. Linda or me. Mm -hmm. but, okay. but otherwise, we're going to you know, try and break down these categories. And, and, and try to match you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, some of them are straightforward. But, yeah. but, <laughs> no. but to do the accreditation, and you've got to do the self assessment. Yeah, so you've got, right. you've got to be one and, and walk it through. And, yeah. yeah. So there's nine okay. members. So one, one, and everybody's been saying that they want to get more involved. So. So great. sorry. Yeah, this is it. And then this, this is, is it. Thing, well, we do need a marketing <laughs> professional, so yeah, we're going to give that one to
Anyway, um, so in advance, I appreciate any help that you can give us. We will hope to make it as efficient um, as possible and painless needs, needless to say. Could be fun, um, you know, could be a brainstorming meeting that we help with for each of the committees and it could be, maybe there's only one other meeting necessary. It might not be very time consuming, but. Um, I think it depends on the committee and the getting. I will. There was a lot of email and zip drive things coming in, you know, at me all at once. So there's a lot of virtual paper involved that I do have to sort through to give to each of you, I think, to make it you know, a little bit more um, understandable. So I will do that. But um, there you is know, a manual. It could be that you each end up getting a manual. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, a commitment by our next meeting. What about a, like a general blurb of each of the nine? Yes. You know, some, some, you well, that's a little concise, I know. I didn't do that because it was hard. I didn't get any documentation that did that. So I have to take it out of the bigger sections, but I will. I will be happy to do that, and I will send it to all of you. Yeah, that'd be great. Yep, and I then we can get done by the. I agree. Stay oh, on, bye. stay on the day. You know, we'll put it off. Okay. Which one? I want to set committees and let the nice. committees themselves set up a time for them to meet okay. as a committee done. and start drilling down. <laughs> and it might be just two mid two meetings, or it might be more, depending on the content you've got drilled through. Yeah, you know, it might vary how many per. One to nine? Yes. Might meet, you know? yeah. Some might meet more, but some might meet yep. less, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. It might be good if either the chair or the vice chair himself yep. were to just assign I think so. us to the committees, because then there's no, you know, I want to do this, yeah. no, I want to do yeah. that. I'd rather, you know, I, agree. I think you know yeah. some of our strengths. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. I you know? totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. So it's on you guys. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> With a lot of us joining in, yeah. it would be great to get it done. Well, yeah, we also, yeah, we want some community. Exactly. I think we're too, we've still got to handpick some people from town or in various areas to be able to, to ask them to say, well, yeah. this is what we're doing. Would you sit in on the govern governance committee? Mm -hmm. kind of thing. So we want to get That's why I'd like a little more yeah, of what it means. Get, I can do that. There is a section for instance. Internal and, um, and external so we can do a fair You know, standard conference. one for purpose and planning is to have a mission statement. Well, yeah, we do. <laughs> but, um, but then it's strategic planning that mm -hmm. is needed. So, um, but anyway. I will parse that all together for you. Great. It will help me also. So I did mean, sort of, if I could have put it off, I would have kind of got your feedback first before I, you know, said yes, my board will be happy to help. <laughs> but I had to jump in and pay. It was $1,700, and that is based on our budget. So there was a scale. And it is a lot of money. I mean, I, I took half from the formula grant, and I used half from our, because our funds are donation gifts and donation funds. So, um, you do have an overall category on each one, and you do explain it. Mm -hmm. In specific, so yeah. I think you can, yeah. you know, I mean, you can have a narrative sentence or something, but yeah. I think we can figure it out. Okay, so more to come. Thank you. Um, the, the preliminary documentation I gave you was by way of introduction, if, you know, if it helps. Um, yeah, take a look at it. We'll, Self-assessment we'll means that's what we're doing on our end, and then we will be peer-reviewed. By the uh, by, the national um, council. And again, any suggestions for people to invite? If you have any thoughts, that is uh, yeah. welcome. Yeah. And we did interestingly. We did a needs assessment. Remember in 2014, and that was um, facilitated by UMass Boston's at that time head of um, head of their geri gerontology. Um, Institute, I guess. But that really is the job that now Caitlin Coyle is in. So she is now doing that for other towns. But 
That said, we did invite key personnel and we had interviews with other people in the town and other town officials. She, she would be going to have to tell her I'm doing that. We're doing this. So you should take every point just updated. Potentially. I mean, I don't know if anyone's read that. That, I believe, is still online, the needs assessment, if you wanted access to that. It's on our, I believe, it's on our, tongue, our web page. Um, I'll either double check it or tell me if you don't find it, but I'm pretty sure it's there. And it was a very good document, but of course that was laying the foundation right. for right. this building. Right. What year was that? 2014. And a lot of that I don't need all to spend a lot of time twirling around your website. There's a lot of information. Some, some could be better, of course. It would be nice to have our own website. That might be something that ends up coming up as a, as a you know, void, unfortunately. So that would, that would take some quick work. Do that quick. I know. That, that yeah. is a worry. But anyway, all right. I'm gonna move on. Yeah. Um, well, uh, so if anybody has any questions, but. Uh, probably everyone wants to take a minute after uh, over the next day or so to just take a look at some of this information that, that is in the handout and kind of get a feel. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. But we to, our, our action steps would be to try to zero in on beginning to establish names with committees. So we move with that. To be continued. To be continued. For months. Yeah. Um, so we had, we're, now we may come back. I know some people departed, but we can come back to some staff reports. <coughs> so the only two I did not do or get to, I guess I should say, um, a transportation report, forgive me. Um, but um, Jess provided a report to you. Yeah. And like I said, I do have a I can't find I never got a pass. Oh, yeah. No. So, um, Can I add, well, before you move on, is transportation, do you have a vague idea? I mean, are you doing the same kind of numbers? I don't really have a vague idea because we are down to two drivers, okay. um, one of whom really only does, well, I'm sorry, we're down to three drivers. One only does Wednesdays, the supermarket trip, and anything else we can fit in that day for her. One is local for the most part, and Joe does the out-of-town medical. So we've been doing more of the out-of-town medical through yeah. South Shore's Community Action Council. Jen spent one day for us last week, um, really, a whole day. <laughs> and I don't think she got up from that desk. I'm sure you must have once, but really. So she kind of got us settled after Lillian had left, and then there was a three-day weekend, and so there were a lot of calls to manage. Um, we've all, Jill's been taking care of it as well, and I've jumped in on occasion. So I would say things are generally the same mm -hmm. status, but... I mean, generally winter months were a little bit slower, so... True. I don't know. True. I don't think we've said no to anyone except one medical because we did not know that she needed a companion. Um, yeah. And we didn't know that until the day before. We'd already used two and... We had one more to go to, but she could not do it. So um, we had to have her rescheduled, which did. So um, no, it, it, the numbers are the same, more or less. Um, other activities, well, I talked a little bit about the parties and stuff. Sorry. I know, I know. Pause, pregnant um, pause. I guess we did have some, um, you know, we've had some sickness in the building more than in the entire year and a half that we have been open since the COVID pandemic. So I will say people have it. It has it happens that people have got it. COVID? Yep. Um, it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's happening. It's happening. <laughs> what we didn't want to happen is certainly happening. Some people are taking more precautions and wearing masks. Some yep. of the instructors have been out because of it, yep. so classes have been canceled. Um, but otherwise, everything is steady, and the numbers are actually quite steady. I mean, yes. you know, crazy. The January programs are chock full that had to be signed up for. Um, 
people have been turned away, they have been waitlist, so it's, it's amazing. And I think a lot of new people coming in for exercise classes. Well, that's oh, yeah? Yeah. 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 Coming in for, for exercise. Exercise classes. Mm -hmm. lots of, mm -hmm. I see lots of new names. And yeah. people like a new Year's resolution. Yeah. New Year's resolutions, yeah. that is true. Oh, that's <laughs> that could be number. very true, right? <laughs> Um, Bob Jackman's class is one that's, you know, a long-standing offering. You know, has gone from one class that we used to cap, we used to have to cap it at like 24, 25, and then when we got here, of course, it was like, well, even the room where it's assigned is not this room, the other classroom. You know, really 28 is the most comfortable. We can go to 30 and we have our 29. <coughs> Thinking we could have used the downstairs room if it got bigger, but he doesn't really like it. He didn't want the the class itself to get much bigger because they have a nice rapport and it's a nice give and take of information sometimes. So anyway, that's when he then offered to do a morning session and an afternoon session, which is amazing. Yeah. That's, that's, that's exhausting, yeah. right? Yeah. So the morning session, because the afternoon would fill up, fill up to 28 or 9. Then the morning session started with that 8, 10, you know, maybe 12. Now that one's full at 29 and the second one's full at 29. So there's no, nowhere else to go. Right. And there are more people who hear about it and would like to take it, but the regulars are, they sort of feel they're grandfathered in and do pressure us <laughs> they feel to yeah. let them sign up earlier than others would be able to because they really haven't received the communication. So we do have a hard time kind of saying, the newsletter needs to be out. And this time we a little bit jumped the gun because we knew people didn't have it in the mail yet but it had been online for at least a week. We had it here, and we did allow signups because we only had a week. But it's tricky, because you want to be fair. So I don't know what's going to happen with that. And then the one new offering we had, which was similar, got the 25 like that, you know, once the newsletter was received, and that was the British history. So that's, that's a goal. That's bold. It's the first time he's been here. He's a very nice man, and it's an interesting sounding course. But the topics are great. Topics and appeal are great. to a lot of people. Yep. And again, we've talked about it. You know, we intend to do more, and hopefully, maybe giving more um, selection would help to distribute the numbers a little bit, or have different days, and people might have to make choices. But um, you know, that's coming in, not to say drips and drafts, but it's not like a one fell swoop where we have five courses to offer. You know what I mean? But we know it's it's a desire out there. And again, the rooms are also. So we have AARP, which I should have put in my report, but I'm sorry. AARP is returning, and appointments will start oh. February 9th. Okay. But they are taking the Peggotty Room Tuesday and Thursdays. Yeah. So that's a big loss for us, even though it's, it's something we want to offer. So I don't want to not offer that. It just limits us. What does that entail when they come? Well, they meet with a meet with people by appointment. I can't remember. I think we can do anywhere from ten to maybe fourteen or sixteen appointments a day. I forget yeah. how that works. They have four volunteers. The Peggotty Room is a good size because they can separate, so to speak, for whether confidentiality or just space. Um, and they meet individually with people by appointment, and then do the taxes, do and the then taxes? have them return to pick them up and get any um, any advice about what they've done for them. So. It's great. It's actually not confined to seniors. I will say they would do it for anyone. Um, it's supposed to be for need, but you know everyone is welcome. People from other towns are welcome. It used to be that Marshfield did it and Hingham did it when we did not. So our people were sent there. Mm -hmm. Now Marshfield still does it and Hingham did not last year. I don't know if they are this year, but we got a lot of people from both Hingham and Norwell and Hull. So, how do people know about it? It's in our newsletter. Um, there should be other marketing. Whether <coughs> I've done that or not, I can't really say. Um, I think there was a flyer posted here, but that's here. And if they call AARP because they've had it done in the past, they just know about yeah. it. Yes, you're right. So, um, and other senior centers would send them to us if they were called. But we had a pretty much a full quorum last year for people. I forget what the numbers were, but I think I reported them afterwards to the to the group yeah. here. Yeah. Thought you were pretty filled up. So we were yeah. we were filled up. So February 9th through mid-April, and um, they can 
We don't have, uh, they like to give out the intake packet before we make appointments. And we don't have that yet. I think we won't have that till Tuesday or Wednesday next week, which is mid-January. So really, um, yeah. I think that's when we targeted that we would start taking appointments, but we need that from them to give out. Anyway, so that is me. But anyway, as far as the activities go, um, everything remains popular, I guess, is the point. Um, numbers are pretty steady. Numbers are steady. Uh, looking forward to some special events as well. Tap dancing has begun. So we have a Thursday at 3 o'clock tap dancing activity. That's new. Uh -huh. We have two days of yoga at 3.30, which in the fitness room. That's the only floor that they can tap dance on. Say, and you know, to be honest, we, we didn't hear them on last Thursday oh, when they were here. Oh. So. Did or did not? Did not. Thank it's you. about from the downstairs. Maybe they heard them in the game. They should have a recital. They should yeah. have a recital. That would be fun. You know, we were talking about having a, um, a talent show, which we did not yeah. advertise yet. We weren't ready to actually have it. We were thinking of it in the spring, but we should have started to whet people's appetite a little bit if you have any talents and you want to start honing them. Um, but it sounds fun and would be a great little, little silly thing to do. But um, So that was something we were looking at. People school. love that. People do love that. Lots I, of people have talents. I library and they had I'm not one of them. from one scope to another. Magicians. Okay. Oh, oh, they did. I had all the one built. Yeah. It was huh? just fun. Well, that would be nice. Um, Erin put together a different kind of a report than we've seen in the past, which I think might be a nice visual. But um, any suggestions, maybe, for us to change it in the future. But um, generally, in the middle of their current initiatives, I mean, she is working on fuel assistance, of course. Yeah. We do have grant money that I have talked about before that I am not only needing to spend, but report to social elder services. So that is a top priority. But we are planning to both give out gift cards for groceries to, not to say eligible, but people that we know are in the system already um, that could use it. And then also some subsidizing lunches, which I know I talked about. SNAP is, is basically the, um, the EBT cards that people get um, to help afford food from the grocery stores. And um, that is also something we could partner with the Department of Transition, I think it is. And, um, and even though it's a little paperwork and reporting to them of our numbers, we do get money back from that. So we think it's worth it, and Erin is working on that. Um, also, just some different resource talks that she could be helpful with. And there is, um, we are planning a health fair for May. So both Jess, of course, and then Erin could be involved in that. We are doing some me mental health awareness for seniors already, but that would be something that we would increase. Erica is working on suicide awareness, and there will be a training for town personnel. There will be a training for the community, and there will be a training here for our senior population here. So um, that is in the works, and in fact, that probably will occur in March. Um, so those are some things that whether Erin and Erica are collaborating on that, or we're doing that, um, or she's working on it herself. Her. Mm -hmm. Two red X's sort of jump out at you. Was that something that you could have just done need to put it under the current? She, yes, it is. It just means it, it was, I guess, not being done before. Yeah. But now she's working on that. So you're right, that didn't need to be there. And then if you look at the resource categories, her total clients at 71, she's kind of parsed out under the categories and how many clients she has seen for those categories. Which is to say that some of the 71 are in multiple categories. So, and then there is just a percentage overall. You can see maybe it stands out that fuel assistance is the larger percentage for the current or last month anyway. Um, <coughs> so I think we can work on this a little bit, but um, certainly she's busy in meeting with people and we are still you know, hearing need for housing. And we had a long case that a lot of us got involved in in November, December, but that came out okay. But um, it is time consuming. 
and also the caregiving resources that people are calling about is constant, really. And I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> JD's going to get some calls. Uh, you know, we only have the agencies that we know of. And if they were interested then in assisted living, we would have those. But we have no other resources outside of social elder services. And though we do lead with that, we do also say we're not sure what the outcome would be once you call, give them the information, tell them what you're looking for. They may or may not be able to respond either quickly or with, you know, with opportunity to provide somebody or even an assessment. So I don't know what they're going to find. Resources are mm -hmm. difficult. Not, not Influent. Yeah, resources are difficult. So, so that is my that is the end. Does anyone have any questions for Linda? Thank you. Full of information Linda yes. as always. <laughs> um, I didn't get any feedback or, or information from Karen Canfield, so uh, I don't have anything to report out on select board. Elaine, what's going on with Foss? Uh, excuse me, Foss is on their winter break. Okay. They're not doing, we're not doing much of anything until March. Okay. It's not that this is a norm for the, well, the weather has not been the norm for, but. Um, but I have forms and we'll be submitting a request because you're meeting next week. February 1st. Oh, February 1st, you're meeting. Okay, sorry. Um, a request for the entertainment for February and also a request for replenishing the coffee fund. So oh, good. Which, okay. Um, they were supporting, so it's certainly much greater than Do what the... Do you have the, the older forms, too? That I don't know. That you haven't given us yet? I don't know. Okay. I'll send you the dates. Mm -hmm. like. um, but otherwise, that's what I'd be requesting next week. Okay. For, for the ones that are already scheduled? February, March. Okay. Uh, Joan, I think on social elder services. Well, it's December 6th meeting, um, big financial report. The audit report was given and the board approved the audit report. The budget was presented for 2023. And the board voted to accept the budget for next year. Dr. Uh, Elder Services will celebrate the 45th anniversary annual meeting in October. And they, they had a, the Dawkin Award was presented to Rep. Ash. Awards were given to workers from five years to 35 years. And Elaine Pepe was the board member of the year. And then, um, I don't know if you heard, I had talked to Linda about it. Um, the, the state approached the nutrition site for the different towns and they, their idea was to have meals served at one, one of the senior houses every day. And they talked about sending Meals on Wheels over to Wheeler Park. Mm -hmm. We convinced them that that was unrealistic, it's not big enough, the parking is horrible, the senior center has lunches every day but Friday and they have transportation. There's people there that get meals on wheels delivered. But it took us a month to really, you know, try to convince them that, you know, this was unrealistic. So right now what they're doing, and I had this is what I had. I had told them, well, what, if you really insist on having lunches at, at Wheel Park, why don't you find out how many are going to go? <laughs> and so what they have done is they've got volunteers just for Wheel Park and to see if people have to sign up for meals and then we would deliver the meals on wheels to them and they would microwave them. Okay. All right. And eat them as a congregate lunch. So together. far, nobody has signed up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they were planning on moving everything, had made plans and everything. I said, you know what this is going to cost? And it's not realistic. Right. Never mind. I'd rather go there with you, or you know, with Erin, or with with Sue, and say, what would it take to have you come to lunch? Do you need transportation? Yep. Do you need subsidized? You know, how can we help you get lunch if that's what you need? But so anyway, it's not. 
You know, they didn't even go to see what the I site was see. for one thing. Yeah, they just made it. But anyway, so I that if you were they going to go to the other senior housing? What? Were they going to go to the other two senior houses? No, because it, they're not equipped for it. Uh, None of them are equipped for it. I mean, you don't realize how much yeah. room we need for Meals on Wheels. Yeah. And they wanted to go into the community room <coughs> that the seniors used in Wheeler Park and two, which is a mail room, <laughs> which is a meeting room, which is a laundry room. Laundry. And not an accredited kitchen or a certain and parking, room. You know, we have trouble parking delivering meals. So anyway, it took us a month for that. Oh, so that's the outcome? Is so they are right now? That's what they're doing now, and it, doesn't, it hasn't worked. But no one's no Thank one you, John. Here. Thank you. They got volunteers, but they yeah. don't, nobody wants to go over there and eat. So. I mean, I'd like to know what the need, what the need is or any way we could help with that. Yeah. So anyway, that was... Oh, wow. So... We got that straightened out. Okay. <laughs> so they they're having they are having an employee wellness week in January 9th to the to the thirteenth, which is really fun, doing a lot about mental health with their workers and stuff on programs. Can, and I, can I interrupt you to ask what? on this because I was gonna ask you. So <clears throat> I saw this announcement a couple of days ago. Old Colony uh -huh. has funded and is beginning to roll out mental health counseling in the community. Right. Is there anything at South Shore Other Services that's comparable to that? Because we're not in the Old Colony Network. Well, they're doing this for their workers. Yeah. Okay. This is for their workers. Okay. Old Colony is doing it for the oh, community. That's interesting. I'd like to look at oh, no, I think it, they've, they've, this was their for workers. They're working. Yeah, so I'm, I'm asking you. It, keep your ear out for yeah. if, any, if, there, if there's any initiative at South Shore Other Services for something comparable in their region because we're not in the old county the elder services regional area. So those services won't be coming to us, whereas we, we need well, social no, services. About that. They okay. didn't have any meeting in January. Okay. Um, so they have 200, they had 200 people waiting for home care services, but now it's down to 165. In South Shore, is like 600 to 700 waiting for services for home health. And the problem is they can't get the workers. They can't get the workers. Even with their given raises, they still, people aren't choosing to work as home health. And you probably know too, the nursing homes are having the same problem. Yes. And all their businesses too. Bars and restaurants. Yeah, right. and, uh, I know, I know. Like all of a sudden we've got a. a but what are these two people doing? Yeah, what are they doing? Well, where's, that's where's what I keep drink? asking. Right. <laughs> okay, the answer is. Yeah, the incentives are all gone now to stay home. You know what I mean? Yeah, Trying to fill the shelter. Take them for income. Right. And yeah, all, that's what I want to know. They raised, they raised, they raised all the made, everything was raised. They gave, they gave them more raises. And they even transportation, <coughs> um, even for our. our Meals on Wheels, the people who put in for transportation, they, they, they've upped that for them too. Well, a good sign is uh, uh, St. Luke's has continued with a community dinner. So it's on the 22nd, and it's going to have clam chowder, wow. and chicken and broccoli with pasta, and uh, chocolate trifle. Ooh, sounds mm -hmm. nice. That's, that does sound good. That so good. It, we, get, it, we get like 40 people. It's the 22nd? 22nd. Okay. 5 o'clock. Well, very how good. much is the uh, fee? The ticket? Is there a ticket? Oh, oh, no, it's free. Is it free? Oh, it's free. Yeah. People give donations, but it's oh. free. Yeah. Some people give donations and some can't. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's good. Thank you. Thank you, John. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been on a while, but that's yeah. nice. I mean, there's <clears throat> I like the 50 to 75 people every month. We, know, we get like what? At, what she said, 40, yeah. Yeah. 40 people. Okay. Around 40 people, 45. Okay. Uh, does anyone have any business items to raise? Or, or do we talk one item? Semi late. Um, well, if no one has any other uh, uh, comments, uh, business. Etc. Questions? I would ask for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Second.
I'm making a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you all for coming. Our next meeting is February 9th. And we'll start working on some accreditation.